Hello everybody. Before I get into the video, like telling you guys what I'm going to be doing in this video, I wanted to exp express how excited I am for this video and how I've been working on this video for the past couple weeks and I would also explain why I haven't uploaded in a couple weeks if some of you guys actually like to come back to my channel. So, without further ado, let's get into what I've got going on today. So today I'm going to be discussing the difference, the differences between indoors and outdoor hydroponics. I'm going to be explaining the differences and how um, they work. Also, like the different systems that you can you can do with those a little bit, and what works for me. And also how or what systems that I would suggest different people in different situations lean towards. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. I hope you guys stick with me throughout the entirety of this video because I think that there will be plenty of information uh, to give to you guys and also I think that this video will be a little bit more entertaining than my other videos. I'm going to try to switch some things up and we'll see how this goes. Alright guys, so I'm here in my indoor uh, system. So I've noticed that indoor systems are both easier and harder than outdoor systems in certain ways. To start, the easier ways is that you don't have to worry about concentration so much, in my experience. All I have to do in my personal experience with this system is to just add water to the system, to add more nutrients to the system. Not just plain water, but definitely the mix that you're supposed to be using and what works for you. So I've also noticed that with these systems, you have a lot less algae issues. When I first started, I started covering these things with uh, aluminum foil, or I was looking for uh, opaque buckets, ones that don't pass any light through, don't allow light to pass through, and I noticed that it didn't really need it. So I've also noticed that there is no algae growth, even with these, I would call them semi-transparent buckets, they're closer to opaque than semi-transparent, but they do allow some light to come through, and I've noticed little to no algae growth in these buckets. So that's another plus to these systems for sure. Another bonus is all you, like I said earlier, all you have to do is just watch the water level. See, this one's a little low. I like to keep it between these two things. It depends on the root ball. You want to keep it about halfway exposed. If it's not halfway exposed, you can have either not enough nutrients getting to the roots and then it won't grow as fast, or the other way around where there's too much roots uh, covered with water and it will cause all kinds of issues like root rot and stuff like that. So they definitely need air, they also need a lot of nutrients. So the seemingly harder parts about this, something that I've noticed is it's it's a little harder to it's a little harder to grow different plants in these systems. So I've had a lot of trouble growing tomatoes or larger plants indoors. For one you have to have trellises and also you don't get as good of a growth indoors unless you have natural light supplemented with grow lights or better grow lights to begin with but for these starter type lights that I use they really don't grow well at all so I've learned that smaller plants like peppers and uh, leafy vegetables and stuff grow really really well in these systems and not so much the bigger plants that's one of the downsides to growing indoors another downside is that it can be a little more expensive especially if uh, you only have options to big outdoor spaces with uh, lots and lots of light. I'll get into the reasoning behind that later, but basically if you have just an indoor option, it can be a little bit more expensive because you have to have supplemental lights like these. These lights, all in all, I think cost me a little over $100 to build, but that will only supply light for around four plants maybe five or six, but it starts to get a little crowded and certain plants don't get as much light. So you have to worry about how many lights you need. So another downside is that you will have to learn the different setups and figure out what you need to do. So like with this method, I use the crack key method because it's very simple to use. You just gotta watch water levels and stuff. It may be a little more difficult than other systems. I'm not super experienced with other systems. But from what I've found, that this is the easiest and cheapest way to start out. Um, just to give you a little free tip, start uh, looking at the crack key method is a really good, really good option for small scale indoor growing like this. So there's another more expensive tip 
but like for the more expensive for this, you may have to invest in maybe a light meter. You're, there are some apps for your phone. Uh, you need to, when you're finding lights, which is another downside I'll get to in a minute, uh, you'll have to know how much light these are putting out and how much energy you need. So I've heard some people say just, just get a high lumen and some people say that you have to watch out for light spectrums and stuff like that. But uh, another easier way to do that instead of going into all the super high tech and super um, time consuming aspects of trying to find the perfect grow lights for your system is to just find what other people use. And I will make a completely different video, a really short video hopefully, about the different lights that I use and what works for me. All right, so that's pretty much the downsides to these systems. It's really a good system uh, for growing small scale stuff. And uh, now I think we're gonna jump into the uh, pros and cons of the outdoor system. So stay tuned for that. This is my outdoor hydroponic, one of my two outdoor hydroponic uh, growth systems. And I'm gonna go into some of the reasons why I believe that outdoor systems are better in some ways and also not as good in some ways as indoor systems depending on what your situation is and you can decide for yourself whether or not you think that this is better or worse for you. So some of the benefits to growing outdoors is obviously you will not have to mess with lighting. Your The sun is already at the perfect, I mean plants have evolved to work off the sun's lights with UV and everything you don't have to worry about anything with indoors you have to worry about all that with outdoors you do not so that is one huge plus but with that plus you also have some downsides now with the Sun producing as much heat as it does and living here in Northeast Arkansas the problem is that we have really hot summers now if you live somewhere more northern you may have more mild summers and this may not be a problem for you at all but with here uh, I have a hard time keeping the buckets or the, the nutrient solution at a perfect, at that perfect optimum temperature range. And I believe that's between, I think it was 65 and 85. But don't quote me on that. Just do a quick Google search and double check me. And um, definitely make sure you do that before you start. And make sure you can keep that water at that optimum temperature range. But I've noticed that this partial sun system that I'm working on right here is growing well and also keeps at a very optimum temperature for growth and uh, flourishing in this. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. These are all Roma tomatoes and they're growing really, really well. So another downside to this as well with more sun is that you have to worry more about algae and other contaminants. Um, I have not noticed any other contaminants, but algae is definitely a, a problem for me, especially when I have them in full sun, then you really have to worry about your buckets being uh, semi-transparent or transparent. If you use a transparent container, just forget about it. It's going to grow a whole lot of algae. Now, you really, really would like to get a an opaque bucket, which means no light gets through it at all. Now, that is probably a lot harder than um, trying to find a semi-transparent bucket like I have. I get these for free, uh, but definitely try to find some free buckets. So, let's get back on topic. So. Algae growth is definitely an issue for me. I, in this partial sun system, it's not as bad as out is as out in the full sun area that I've got, but it's definitely an issue. So basically, what I do is I just try to cover my semi-transparent buckets. I don't know if you call these semi-transparent or not, but some light definitely does get through enough light to allow for algae to grow in abundance. So what I do is I just went out and grabbed a cheap roll of aluminum foil which is completely opaque and doesn't let any light through and I just wrap these buckets in it and just I covered probably 85 80 percent of the bucket with aluminum foil and I've noticed that that has cut the algae growth down significantly enough to where it's not a problem for me at all with that said let's move on to the conclusion and what systems I believe would work uh, for you or what systems or situations that I think would work for what type of system. So let's get into that and uh, that'll be a wrap for this video. So All, right. All right guys, so here we are in my outdoor hut. This is my outdoor garden. Most of my plants out here are growing in soil and they're growing well. And also I have this one hydroponic plant growing here on the end. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I have been struggling to keep this plant alive. And it's, I, I would say after testing pHs, testing concentrations, keeping concentrations at 
optimum and also pH optimum, which was a little bit more difficult since algae growth is also a little bit more rampant. Uh, but keeping pH and, and the concentration at the optimum levels, I still saw a bunch of wilting and death on this plant. I started seeing uh, the stems and stuff turning yellow and I was like, I'm going to lose this plant. And I have tons, tons of little cherry tomatoes growing on this thing. Look at that. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty good growth for, for this plant. And this is definitely way ahead of my other soil plant. That one's growing tomatoes as well, but it's not growing nearly as big nor as, nor as, uh, it's not as producing as well as this uh, hydroponic plant is. So it's really discouraging to see it die in the heat of the summer. And that is the key. The heat is actually my main issue with these plants. With how outdoor full sun hydroponic plants, the biggest downside is the heat. Now this has the same uh, pros as the partial shade that we saw earlier, but the downside of course, the added downside is that the heat is much, much harder to control out here. And I've got this thing covered up to around 80% of the bucket covered and algae growth is kept at a minimum, although it's not nearly as controlled as the partial shade. So if you have a very hot summer, maybe you're in the area similar to mine where you're uh, subtropical or something, then you have a lot of heat and this sun is, it is intense here. So it's great for growing these plants, but you're also going to have to worry about temperature. now. Uh, something I'm going to attempt is maybe to try either to insulate this with something, another option would maybe to bury the buckets in dirt to use the natural uh, insulated properties of the dirt here. But that's also going to add some time and uh, effort. You're also not going to be able to see your water levels as easy. You're going to have to take the lid off and that's also more difficult with my system. But I'm going to be messing with some new stuff with this and I'm uh, not giving up on growing these things full sun, but as of right now it looks like I'm going to try to get some kind of cover to uh, these things and also to get some kind of greenhouse situation going in the future. Alright, so we had a real, real weird uh, camera malfunction. It cut off and I didn't get the chance to actually go over the different systems that I would suggest you guys do. So basically the first thing, the first one I'm going to talk about is the smaller scale stuff, the people who want to do it as a hobby and not necessarily go full bore into it yet. Maybe you're like I was and wanted to start out and just want to get some green stuff in your, in your house, maybe get some uh, vegetables or fruits growing in the winter. Uh, maybe you didn't want, maybe you don't like Walmart and going into the store and buying you know, your produce there and stuff like that and just want to grow some stuff for yourself. And that's that's totally cool. So what I would suggest for you guys is just to start out small indoors. If you have the space, and most of you do, you, you're surprised on how little space you can grow stuff in. I have actually quite a big space that I can grow stuff, but I've been dwindling it down to just that one space you saw in the video. So start out small, start out hydroponics, check out the crack key method, and also stay tuned for my video that I'll be releasing really soon about how to get started with lights on a budget and please stay tuned for that hit the subscribe button actually and hit the notification bell as well so that way you will be notified whenever i come out with that and i hope that that really clears up a lot of uh the remaining obstacles for you guys in getting started with this stuff so number two i would say is a larger scale like not commercial scale but just someone who wants to grow maybe all of their plants are like maybe want to have a large garden outside and don't want to do dirt and they just want to do uh, hydroponic. So what I would suggest for you guys is to actually go and start it, try starting outside. Maybe try on a smaller scale. Maybe you already have a garden you want to switch. So just try on a small scale. A couple buckets, uh, crack key method, or maybe you're going to try out a different system. Do your research and try starting outdoors. That way you don't have to mess with expensive lighting grid systems and a lot of indoor space. And maybe also look into a greenhouse because that would also help you uh, with a lot of those systems and also it will help maybe regulate temperatures a little better and give you a longer growing season as well. Do your research on that and that'll be a really, really good system I believe for you guys. Now there is a third and that's right in between those two. So that's what I was going to try out is try making a small greenhouse here and I'll be coming out with a video not anytime soon but eventually I'll be coming out with a video on plans and also of maybe assembling this 
uh, for as cheap as possible while it also will still look good. That's my that's my goal is to do it on budget, but also make it look nice. All right, let's get to the rest of the video. All right, well, the sun is out in full. I am sweating alive, and <laughs> I just wanted to tell you guys that thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, if you stuck with it through the end, I really, really appreciate it, and um, I really want to know what you guys think about this video, and if the more camera angles, the more uh, situations I put you guys in while I was just talking the whole video. I hope that was a lot more entertaining than just sitting at that brick wall in the beginning and just talking my head off. Uh, to you guys and not switching around and doing any of this more entertaining stuff. I hope that that really made this video better for you guys. So if you guys notice that this is a little bit sporadic, let me know. I think I think that this video was more concise than my previous videos, but also I think that it definitely needs improvement on um, becoming more concise and also becoming uh, less sporadic in going back and talking about stuff that I talked about previously and also uh, just stuff like that in general. So. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content and if you like watching my hydroponic stuff, uh, then please hit the subscribe button because I will be doing more regular videos in the future.